well hi everyone welcome to day 8 the penultimate day of the training session and my apologies for for the delay um, in starting this uh it seems always like i am i'm this kind of person who who's preparing right till the very end um uh, but that doesn't happen during tournaments and also during examinations uh, when i was studying but it does happen when i'm taking this class because i just want to make sure that everything is in order for me to be teaching you so today's session is all about rook versus pawns uh, this is very interesting subject uh, we are going to talk a lot about it and uh, learn different themes in this but first of all a big welcome to all of you who are here um anup datta sumed ramteke shanks mayur hegde rutik nemane prathamesh divekar abdul kalam <clears throat> ajay kumar rishila banerji arsha das neev patel welcome everyone so how how have you been you know uh, yesterday was quite an interesting day for me uh, apart from our live training i was live once again at night uh, at 9:30 on uh, this uh, samay raina's channel uh, where i did a show with the comedians i i don't know if uh, anyone was there watching it from you but i did i did see uh, that they were calling out a few names who attend this class i think shanks was there um, jaydeep chakrabarty was there jaydeep doesn't attend the end game sessions but he was there but i don't know if more more people from uh, you uh, it's it's there on the channel i think uh, on if you go to samay raina uh, if you type his name you will find that okay um Ajay Kumar says yesterday your Hindi with Samay was fantastic, and also Shrikant Amun Amunje was there. Nice, wonderful. Uh, so you guys were there. Actually, I I prepared some good positions, and it would be nice for all of you to go there and have a look at it. Uh, there were some very interesting positions. Ilam Parthi, welcome. Also Dharma Ratne, Keshav Tiwari. and there is also someone from mexico here i just missed his name ah jaydeep is here nice to see him okay wonderful so let's begin i think um, we have an aim today to get closer to 2700 in solving positions so let's start with the tactics okay so let's do that okay so uh, about the thumbnail yeah the thumbnail is with anish giri uh, and the reason why i kept that thumbnail was because <clears throat> i want to kind of tell you about anish uh, he is one of the best players in the world top gm uh, yet extremely down to earth uh, in fact he he speaks with just about everyone very nice person and very inspiring personality and this was also one of the reasons why i wanted to keep this thumbnail for today no not for any particular reason as such but just for you to keep in mind that um, even if you become a top player some day which i know that many of you will from here uh, you should have your head uh, at the right place and and that is true for anish he's he's very down to earth and a nice person okay so jaydeep says uh, i got to hear you talking hindi for the first time <laughs> well hindi is something that i've been speaking since childhood so uh, not a big problem there arun dikshit welcome to the show Yes, mission twenty seven hundred, Rishila. Denner Bueller from Brazil, 
welcome okay so here we have a position where it's white to move and draw that's interesting because as i can see here um white is a piece down so he has to draw the game but you have to be careful here there are so many um things happening in the position okay so vidip kona and aditi and divya neev patel say queen takes d6 okay that's interesting so all those who say queen takes d6 maybe you can think of some defensive possibilities for your opponent because it's quite possible that your opponent could defend the position and you might just lose it so queen into d6 don't expect that your opponent is going to recapture your queen this is one of the basic errors uh, that we make where we capture something and expect that opponent will recapture for example here queen d6 he he would take with a rook or bishop then bishop into f7 is a mate correct so queen d6 rook d6 bishop f7 queen d6 bd6 bishop f7 but queen d6 what if he takes queen into e3 check you have to consider it uh, and then the king has to go if he goes to the d file then rook d6 comes with a check and if he goes to c2 or b1 there is bishop e4 check followed by bishop into g6 so you are not just pieced down but you are in big trouble so you need to be careful here yes after queen d6 queen into e3 might be a strong move okay ilam parthi has an has a variation here queen into d6 um if what did he say a queen into b3 then queen f8 rook f8 knight e7 king h8 rook h7 king h7 rook h1 nice that's a nice variation but i think ilam parthi after queen d6 queen e3 seems to be refuting everything so everyone is just suggesting queen d6 i don't understand am i missing something after queen into e3 or well rook h7 also we have to think about queen into e3 in in all the moves queen e3 is, has to be taken into consideration yes i think neev patel Ha, is right on the ball here also maybe he's he's the only one who's got this right and yes jaydeep as well jaydeep has got this right uh, i'm i'm actually concerned here because you know when we solve such studies uh, and when we solve such positions it's very easy to start thinking like there will be some sacrifice like rook into h7 or queen into d6 but sometimes you have to just calm down look at what's happening yes ajay kumar you are right pradeep das also good job <laughs> sandeep kumawat says how did you feel playing with the comedians well it was an it was a new experience it was fun and uh, i enjoy the seeing the process of someone who is Uh, they are learning chess and getting better at it at it each day in a fun way so that's uh, very interesting to see okay so bishop f7 is the right move knight f7 and now comes this stunning sacrifice queen f8 knight e7 check and you can make a draw here the problem is that you would really love to play rook h7 king h7 and mate but the knight jumps in so it's not a mate also uh, here i was thinking 
uh, that when all of you suggested this, this was my problem. And if you go here, rook d6. If you go to c2, then at the very least I have bishop e4 check or king b1, bishop e4 check, and I can take here. Okay, good. Let's go to the next one. This one is black to move. So black has got the white king running here nicely. Now your job is to checkmate him. May not be very straightforward. Ah, Ilam Parthi has given a nice variation. Queen d6 in the last position, queen e3, king b1, bishop e4, king a1, bg6, queen g6. Ah, if I take hg6, then there is bishop f7, but there is rook d1, rook d1, and bg6. Okay, nice. Yeah, Mohit Kumar Soni, that is the refutation to your move. Uh, knight into b2 says Vishal Kumar. Well, think of the entire variation. Think of the entire variation here. Don't don't jump to conclusions. Think what's happening. The rook is hanging here. See it carefully. See every aspect of it. There is maybe a check somewhere here. Queen d2 is hanging. Knight d2 is hanging. The rook is here. Pawn is threatening to queen. So when you look at the position carefully, then you start calculating. Don't start seeing the first move that comes to your mind. Okay, knight b2. Which could be right. I mean, I don't I don't deny it. Okay, so here, if we, what if we begin with knight d2, which looks like the first, first queen d2, then he takes queen d2, knight d2, d7, and I don't think we can stop the pawn from queening, correct? Uh, next is, what if he takes knight takes d2 in this position? Uh, then still d7. Okay, this is quite tricky, I mean, because queen c3, bc3, rook b1, uh, and b5 is unpreventable, says Arun Dikshit. Arun, but then I just take queen into c4. Uh, I don't think that will work. So, well, I have some of you who are saying b5. Because if knight takes, you have knight b6 check winning the queen. If king into b5, then knight into d2. And now if c uh, d7, oops, I, I didn't want to make that. I'm just, I was just showing, but knight into d2, it's just like a, how do you say, a touch, touch to move or a mouse slip. Uh, d7, queen into b2, king c6, queen b6 check and mate. Okay, that's interesting because the queen is coming over there. So you start with b5, takes, now knight takes d2, d7, you take b2, and now queen b3. Uh, but but at the very least I can take your queen yeah with the knight d8 queen king h7 and I'm I'm at least an exchange of but could be could there be something else that I'm missing no I think we should take the queen yes queen king h7 king h7 or should we go king g7 king g7 queen f6 
so king h7 yeah well this is interesting because if we began with just knight d2 here and then you play d7 then b5 he is not ob obliged to take with the king now he can even play king a5 perhaps because now the knight is not controlling that square also knight into b5 becomes a possibility and then you have to contend with the queen over there so that's the reason why um, queen d5 b5 you take you force him to take with the king then you take on d2 d7 queen into b2 and here um, queen b3 knight takes b3 okay let's go to the next one here it is black to move let's do this the last one for the day i know that we could have done better if i had not messed up the touch to piece like not touch that piece but okay anyway let's try to get this one right and you can see how they are testing us really with tough ones all the time 2500 positions Karan Parik is here who says yesterday's 930 session was so funny but the beast video with the comedian was so so comedy yeah Adiban was fantastic he was just good Pankaj Panchal says you have converted me from night owl to morning bird and how do you feel Pankaj do you do you like it or no So black to move here any suggestions don't you think that just moving the rook here would win the piece on d4 isn't it pinned badly Varun Mandal says Sagarsha OP I just don't understand this OP concept maybe it's called overpowered or something but it's something that just it's beyond me um, yeah rookie d8 is what everyone is suggesting but is there some defense after rookie d8 I know you're threatening bd4 bd4 rook d4 but then you have to consider the intermediate move uh, c5 at that point so actually let's imagine uh, rookie d8 and I make a move like say I'm thinking of aloud a3 bishop d4 bishop d4 rook d4 uh, c5 stopping queen b4 basically with a3 maybe it seems complicated rook d8 b4 and c5 yeah directly b4 perhaps Mayur you are right uh, no need to play a3 okay rook e d8 b4 bishop d4 bishop d4 rook d4 c5 nice because then queen b4 queen into b4 rook b4 rook d8 that is the problem maybe uh, the right move could be to put the rook on e3 it's quite possible but then you have to contend with knight f5 yeah not so sure ah okay rook so maybe rook e d8 b4 b4 is the is the thing which i am worried about Rook e3 here. Oh, 
Omar Shah from Canada, Toronto. Welcome. Yeah, Arshia, rookie 3, knight f5. What do you plan there? Not sure. Yeah, bishop f, rook e d8, bishop f1, Jaideep, then um, rook d4 seems okay, but I think rook e d8, b4, as Mayur rightly points out. Mayur says a5, but a5 looks too slow. I mean, doesn't do anything. Knight could just jump here or here. Rook d4 suggested by Dandapani, Raghuesh, but then bishop d4, rook e2, maybe even bishop into c5. Seems okay. Uh, rook e d8, b4, rook into d4. Okay, that's what Pankaj says. But then uh, Pankaj, what about, ah, if you take b into c5, queen into b2. So you take rook d4, if bishop d4, you take bishop d4. Ah, nice. Any any problems with rook d8? Or are you sure that rook d8 works? Ah, Pradeep says even that works. Nice. I think b4 has many flaws. b4, if rook e d8, b4, bishop d4, bishop d4, rook d4, c5, Queen e6 because now rook d4, rook d4, queen d4, queen a2 is a mate. Good. Very nice. So, so rook e d8, b4, bishop into d4 also wins. There's no problem there. I'm not. Uh, I just feel that there could be something we are missing here. But anyway, let's go for it. Rook e d8. Come on. That was, there had to be something, right? For a 2500 position. But, uh, well, let's look at it. Rook e d8. b4 is what we were considering. But now bishop takes. And if you go c5, then I just take here. That's a nice variation. Takes, takes and rook d1. Because if uh, rook d6, you have bishop d6. So bd4, now bishop d4, rook d4, c5. And now this is a nice move. Uh, someone had mentioned that in this position, um, that you begin with rook d4 here, uh, which is also pretty good. Not at all bad, but this is just very strong. After bishop d4, rook d4, c5, play queen e6. And after rook d4, you have rook d4 and there is a mate on a2. So, works out pretty well. Yeah, good job by all, all of you today. The positions keep getting tougher and tougher. So, uh, not easy, but we have reached 2674, which is a... I think 5 point increase than yesterday we were 2669 if I'm not mistaken. Slow and steady progress. Yeah, we shouldn't be too greedy. Uh, and we have 26 points to gain. Maybe tomorrow we should try to get them. The last day. <laughs> okay, so let's begin with today. Okay, uh, do one more maybe, said everyone. Ah, 2662, so we gained 12 ELO points today. I think we should begin with the end game because we have a lot to cover there. And uh, I'm, I'm going to, Rook versus Pawns is actually a very, very interesting subject. Like, uh, there are so many themes. So I'm going to teach you theme-wise today, but I'm not going to tell you the theme. You will tell me the theme, what it is, and we will try to 
build up those themes okay so let's let's do it let me begin with the first position so this is the position uh, white is here this is first rank so the pawn is moving this way it's white to move what should white play okay a few of you have written um, agad matter also came to samay raina's channel okay that's that's nice to know yeah agad matter has been there on his channel and it's very nice like they have got anand with it so many top players but but my favorite remains uh, of course biswa I, i really like him all those who haven't seen his comedy can can check it out very nice uh, i enjoy it artistic not malayalam creation says i loved watching yesterday's video with samay raina wonderful narayanan srinivasan says maybe let's dedicate one extra day just for puzzles not a bad idea we'll think about it okay good so this position if you see uh, i have right answer from pankaj panchal shanks neev patel ayush ram take practical thinking ragavesh dandapani rachit shri kumar ilam parthi arsha das all of you have said the right move here many of you which is rook g5 excellent uh and what is the theme so tell me the name of the theme uh, yeah i should announce the position for uh, thank you so much for reminding me pragnesh solanki white king h h8 rook g8 black king d6 pawn c5 uh, i would like to say uh, ashwin and a uh, few of his students do attend this these sessions regularly and uh, they it's quite useful for them so for them um, king h8 rook g8 king d6 c5 yes cutting the king off that is a theme says shri kumar and also this is known as the horizontal cut off and remember if you can cut off the king on the fourth rank or here it's the fifth rank for for white for black it's the fourth rank so the pawn is on fourth rank you cut him off behind it this position becomes a lost one because the reason is simple you push the pawn then you bring the king now the king cannot come up so he must push the pawn but now the king is too far away from the pawn so you attack the pawn the king cannot defend it he has to push and you win the pawn okay so cutting the the pawn like cutting the king off is a very strong weapon because the only way he can make progress is to go from this side so if i go now king c6 king g7 king b5 king f6 uh king b4 king e5 c4 king d4 it took so much time for black to do this that white is just able to stop the pawn without any problems so that's the reason why the horizontal cut off is a very very powerful weapon okay for all of you and cutting it off on the fourth rank is very good imagine that in this position okay i'm just going to uh, bring it all one step ahead here now if you see this position is a is will be a draw because now the cut off does not work i just push the pawn you bring the king push the pawn and now there is if you attack i'll make a queen so you have to go back and now i can bring my king in and there's no time for the white king to join so it's a draw so cutting him off on the fourth rank is very important uh let me just ask you one question more from this position because it's an interesting one 
after this you all said rook g5 but what happens to king g7 why is this move not good because you know my idea is if you play say c4 i will come up if you play now c3 then rook c8 so king d5 i come up king uh, here i come up c3 i give you a check you have to go here i come back and i am just in time to stop the pawn completely fine so what's the problem here can anyone tell me why is king g7 a bad move Yeah, very good. Arun Dikshit, you are absolutely right. King g7 is bad because of not king d5, Arshia, not, uh, not, not king d5, Kimaya. The right move is king e5. Excellent. Very good job by Neev Patel, Reema Singh, Shrishant, Radha Madana. Abdul Kalam, Yash Bharadia, Ayush Ram Teke, Tinku Saha, Ragvesh Dandapani. Suryan Shwarma, you have got the theme right as well. Excellent. So, what is this known as what is this theme known as when i play my king to e5 not to d5 because if i go to d5 the king still keeps coming closer say i go now king d4 uh, of course there could be other ways to win i'm just trying to check this one uh, here 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 pawn push check king here and i think it should win so it's important to stop the white king from coming closer and you play this move. What's it known? What is this theme known? Yes, Siddharth, you are right. Anup Datta, you are right. Arjun PR, it's known as Ilamparthi, you are right. Mayur Gondarekar has two names, which is shouldering and body check. Both are correct. It's the same theme, shouldering or body check. Body check means checking, like don't come close to me. Don't come close to my body sort of body check okay nice not diagonal opposition shubham kumar shouldering or body check would be nice so what i would do is um, in this position i mean diagonal opposition could also be a theme but um, shouldering is much more common so what i will try to do is i'll try to make this box here where i will add all the things that oops sorry uh, i don't know uh, just a second let me get this working yeah so so what i'm going to do is i'm going to write down all the themes that you are suggesting here so that we'll know at the end of it how many we have learned so here first theme that you said was cutting the king off horizontally let me make this smaller a bit yeah okay so this is the first theme Uh, the next theme that we learned right now and as you sh said is shouldering or body check very good okay so we have two themes that we have learned from first position let's see if we can uh, yeah Pradeep Das says social distancing Tarun M says it's called isolating and quarantining <laughs> nice uh, so what I would do is with every position, we'll write down themes 
and we will see if we can finally come with come up with a set number of themes for rook versus pawn if let's say we have 10 themes and everything can fit within it great okay let's do another one now let's go to the second one um this one is pretty famous position and i don't know if you would know it but if you don't know it then this is quite a tough one if you know it already this is simple because you have studied it um white to move the pawn is coming this way okay it's not going that way always white will be at the bottom remember that aditya anand says i'm late i want to kill myself don't do that you are from mauritius amazing that's where amruta and i went from uh, for our honeymoon mauritius uh ykg167 says hi sagar here from samais channel complete beginner could you make a series for complete beginners sure ykg will will do that um, thanks for coming here and uh, we're working on that in fact we are working on a very ambitious project uh, which i will talk about soon when we have made some progress but a beginner's course would surely be part of it here uh, ykg it might be slightly tough but maybe you can appreciate uh, the difficulty of chess i don't know how tough it is or i'll just be part of this if you would like okay so neev patel pradeep das you are right the the position is king a8 rook h2 black king g7 pawn g5 king a8 rook h2 king g7 g5 thanks tinku saha subhayan for reminding uh win legaspi is right pradeep das is right soham shirode is right baku choku is right shrishant subhash goyal reshu jain shivendra you all are right mayur hegde subhayan dharmaratne swami excellent you guys are so strong you know everything ah huh? mayur gondalekar says as the king can resort to body check make sense to play dash first i don't know what it is called though okay nice Ilam Parthi also knows where this game was played. He said this game was played in Tashkent. Okay, wonderful. I think I can find whose game it was, although I haven't written it here. Yeah, I it was Lerner versus Dorfman. That was the game. And you are absolutely right. It was played in Tashkent in 1980. Excellent. So now you know also the name of the players. not just the place and also the year learner dofman 1980 tashkent okay uh, yash says you haven't wrote that in the first point about cutting from the fourth rank well yash it all comes under horizontal cut off basically okay so the right move here is if you play king b7 which looks the best move to bring your king in quickly to this position then the problem is he goes king f6 king c6 and now the theme which we have learned king e5 shouldering the king telling him hey don't come near me the way i i explain shouldering to everyone is Uh, a scene in the mumbai local train i don't know how many of you here are from mumbai but all those who are from mumbai would surely know what i'm talking about if you have traveled in the peak hours of mumbai locals it's so crowded it's so crowded you don't have space to breathe and then you use the elbow and kind of say hey don't come closer shoulder him off stay away from me yeah because often they are just falling up falling on you so uh, that's a good way to remember what shouldering is and you can think of black king traveling in a local train and telling the white king to stay away okay 
Anup Datta is from Mumbai. Nice, he's happy. Uh, king e5, and now it's very difficult to win because let's say you go king c5. Uh, I could play king e4. Uh, or maybe just g4. Let's begin with g4. Why to? Uh, if you give me a check, I come king f4, king d4, king f3, uh, king d3, g3. And I'm just in time. Like if you go rook e8, then g2, check, king g3, check, king h2, threatening to queen now. And you would have won if your king was here. But it isn't. It's just one more too far away. And it's a draw. Anup Datta says, I'm from Mumbai. Uh, Mitesh Borkhetaria, untouchability. Sumed Round, take care. Travel in trains in Mumbai. Amai Kanitkar. Swaya Mubale, Virat Chess. Wonderful. Baku Choku says, I'm from Dadar. Nice to know. Karan Parik, Anju Narang, Prathamesh Divekar. Very nice. Aditya Anand also has been to Mumbai from uh, Mauritius. Pradeep Das. Well, in Mumbai local, there is no social distancing. Absolutely not. Um, Amai Kanitkar says, Must the Upma Dili. That's Marathi for saying a good example or a good comparison. Okay, yes, you too have traveled in Mumbai train. Soham Shirode as well. Kimaya is from Kalyan. Lot of people from Mumbai, yeah. Thane, Dadar. So the entire Mumbai is covered. Okay. So that's the reason why when you play king b7, king f6, king c6, king e5, he's shouldering you. So what you do is you tell him. Hey, there is no way you can shoulder my king because I am cutting you off now. So, okay, black says, but you wasted a move. I can push my pawn, but no, you can't because you lose the pawn. Okay, you simply lose the pawn. So, king g6, king d7. Now you push the pawn, king c6. And you will see g3 doesn't work because of rook g2. You still lose the pawn. So king g5, king d5, g3. And now you go behind. Don't play, say, rook g2, which is kind of passive, you know. Again, body check. Shouldering. He's shouldering the king. So here you go rook f8. Now king g4, king e4, g2. Check, king h3, king f3, king h2 and takes the pawn and you win so you can see how strong shouldering really is because i did waste a move but my king had a direct path then no one could stop it okay so that is teamwork jaydeep chakrabarti says i have a house in khargar nice Nice, Jaydeep. So you live in Bangalore, but you also have a house in Khargar. Uh, Dharma Ratnen has never been to Mumbai. He's from Sri Lanka. Sumed Ramteke says, I'm from Nagpur. Very nice. Okay. Kimaya Virle says, my father is a train driver. That is motorman in Central Railway. Amazing. Fantastic. Uh, Kimaya, does that mean you get to sit in the in the engine like uh, where he is uh, driving the the train? Have you ever been there? Okay, so what was this theme that was covered here? Let's just add it to our list. I would say vertical cutoff because we do have horizontal cutoff, but we will add it as vertical cutoff. And we did learn a very important theme here. Uh, which is shouldering which was already in the previous one but we also saw it again over here okay so now let's look at another position i would like you to think about it and this time it would be black to play not white so be careful this one is black to move 
and the pawn is going this way like always yeah going down so black to move how should black play nitin raut says i am from pune i am i am pune amhi puneri okay nice Kimaya Virle says, when I was young, I used to go, but now it's not allowed. Okay. <laughs> Pratamesh Divekar, you've sat in the engine. Fantastic. Siddharth is from Kerala. Okay. Guys, let's come back. Uh, let's come back to these, this position now. Let's not uh, digress too much. It's always fun to, to know you guys better. Vishrut Khare says, really appreciate what you do for chess community. Massive respect. Thank you, Vishrut. Okay, so right move has been suggested by Rima Singh, Suryan Shwarma, Vikas Nishad, Neev Patel, Arun Dikshit, Subhash Goyal, So many people on only sports and cubing Shivam Chaudhary, Udaykant Mishra, Rishila Banerjee, uh, Pradeep Das, Ilam Parthi. Everyone has got it right. Uh, what would you say is the theme of the move? The right move. So here, the point is, if you go f3, I go king d, king c5, you go f2, I go king d4, king g3, uh, king e3. Or if you try to shoulder me here, it's not enough because I go king d3, king g2, king e2. And I'm just in time, you know, I came back. So sometimes normal means do not work. You have to go for abnormal means. For example, if you go f3, king c5, king f4, now trying to shoulder him, he just is back in time. Here, 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 here. And now finally I come and I'm in time to stop the pawn. So the right move here is of course shouldering as rightly pointed out by everyone. <laughs> New Patel says prophylactic shouldering. <laughs> I think we can have sections under shouldering, prophylactic shouldering, uh, necessity shouldering, so on. Yeah. Well, I think king f3 is really a brilliant move because you have a pawn that's moving ahead, that's running ahead. You know, you would really like to play something like king g3. But as we have mentioned, it's very important to stop your opponent's king from coming in. So king f3 although loses a tempo now king e3 i have shouldered your king once again think of the mumbai local it's like stay away from me don't fall upon me and then what to do now for example check white says okay i'm giving you a check what's happening here where should black play his king Honi Arora says, I gave all the correct answers yesterday in Samai Raina's team, but no one saw me. Sorry for that. So, Honi, for, for a change, I was not looking at the chat yesterday. Um, why not King F5? Uh, you mean in this position, King F5? It's a good question. Good question by... Um, I think Uday, who is it? Yeah, Uday Kant Mishra. It's a very good question by Uday Kant. Because I think you, you're wasting time, right? Uh, there are two ways now. Because Rook E1 could be possible, but I could even come in King E4. Now you shoulder me, but I come King C4. Uh, and King E3... Yeah, I'm thinking about what to do. Maybe here. 
I could give a check. King d3, king f1, king e3. No, that doesn't work. Check. That's possible. Actually, king f5. Uh, let's see if our vertical cutoff works because f3, king c5. Now f2 means rook f1. So king f4, king d4. Yeah, this seems to work. So our themes do work. Yeah. So that's why I think king f5 is bad because after rook e1, I'm just cutting you off like in the last position. Yeah. Right. Vertical cutoff. Uh, so here king f3 we were looking at king c5 king e3 and now rook a3 and many of you uh, said the move king e2 here but that's wrong king e2 is not a good move because after king e2 I go king d4 you play f3 I give you a check king f1 king e3 and that's just lost uh, position for black so therefore you must still keep the body check intact in this position don't don't be careless that's saying okay one station is gone i did i did body check at the other station but now parel has come and i will let him come closer don't do that keep the body check Yes, very good. All of you, Kirti Badole, Vidip Kona. No, Vidip, not King E2. If you play King E2, King D4. But Soham, Shirode, Practical Thinking, Aditya, Anand, Ilam, Parthi, all of you are right. Arshya Das. King E4, correct move. Body check. This king says, I want to get into the compartment, but no, you know, I'm not going to let you come in. So, king c4, f3, now you can start pushing, f2, king c3, king e3, and it's a draw, okay? I think we didn't learn any new concepts here, but we just learned how important shouldering can be. Because king f3 coming in front, then king e3, remember king e4 doesn't work here. Because of king c4. Uh, and now if f3 I have rook, f1, rook e1 check. Pushing you to the f file. And coming in. And if you play king e3 here. How should we continue this position? Keshav Tiwari says, can you please explain when to get rook ahead of pawn and when to get behind the pass pawn? Well, uh, Keshav, mostly you would like to get from behind the pawn. Because if you are far away, say somewhere here, he can never attack you. If you are here, he can always attack you and gain a tempo. So preference should always be given to go behind the pawn. But there are some positions like these where you don't have enough time. Then you have to go in front of the pawn. Rekha Irkula. Well, no particular reason to not see your comments. Just that there are many number of comments. Uh, many number uh, of comments coming up. So, I am just missing it off. Uh, Rook A2 is not a good cut off Sukhayan. Because F3, F2 just should be okay. King C3 here. Okay, King C3. Uh, I was worried about King E2. Yeah, somehow it seems to, ah, I didn't say the notation. I'm sorry for that. Maybe I should just repeat it for, for all the visually impaired people. Sorry, I just forgot. Uh, king G4, uh, sorry, King B6 for white, Rook A1, King G4, Pawn F4. So, King F3 is the right move for black. King C5, King E3. Uh, I was actually uh, trying to see instead of King E3, King E4. King c4. Uh, now 
what happens if king e3 king c3 king e2 but i have a feeling that i can play say king c no what can i do here rook a8 f3 Ah, okay, I can go king d4, yes, here, king d4, f3, rook a2, and this wins, okay. So, yeah, king d4 is the correct move. Uh, king c3, maybe instead of king c3, we could also have played rook a3, but king c3 is good with the threat of rook e1, because when the kings are in one line, you can always give a check and push him. So he must come king e2, f3 means rook e1, uh, and now king d4, f3, check, and now he has to go down somewhere and you come in. Okay, so that's how it works. Uh, in this position, rook a3, check, king e4, and it was a draw. Okay, nice. So no real new themes here, but we kind of fortified our knowledge which we already had now a position which is huge because it was played between two of the best players uh, when it was played it was played in 1929 between alexander alekhine and fm bogolyubov the point is what do you play here as black black to move here it's a very famous position <coughs> very famous position black to move you see white is actually threatening b7 b8 b7 king c7 b8 uh, so the position is white king c6 rook b1 pawn b6 black king f5 rook d8 pawn f6 so both sides have one rook and a pawn king c6 rook b1 pawn b6 king f5 rook d8 pawn f6 For all those who are facing issues with some kind of lag, please refresh your browser. It should be okay. Yes, Ilam Parthi, you are absolutely right here. Uh, also, Win Legaspi is right. Neil Patel, you are right. Dharma Ratne is right. Tinku Saha, Reshu Jain, Honi Arora, very good guys. Arjun PR. Rishila, Vidip Kona, you all, you all are much stronger than Bogolyubo. You know what Bogolyubo did here in the game? He played king to g4, which was just a big error because after b7, f5, b8 queen, takes, takes, f4. Now the king is just so much closer, king d5, f3, king e4. There is absolutely no way to stop the pawn. Game over. And Soham Shirode rightly points out, you have to remember shouldering king e4. Even king e5, which looks like another way of shouldering is not good. Because after b7, f5, b8, takes, takes, f4, you have king c5, king e4, king c4, king e3, king c3. You see, whenever the kings are in one line, you are always going to give a check. Now f3 means a check. And once he goes in, you come in. Also, if king e2, I think you can still pursue him. Um, but you can also give a check. Now he can't go to d1 because f pawn will fall. So he has to move in anyway and you just come in and draw the game. Oh, sorry, win the game. Yes, Kapil, I'll keep in mind. Your name is Kapil Irkula, not Rekha. Uh, okay, b7, f5, so king e5 doesn't work. First move is king e4, b7, and now you will see how shouldering works precisely. Takes, takes, rook takes, f4, king c5, 
f3 and now uh, there is no check because king d3 is coming if you come king c4 i go king here you go king c3 i now can play king e2 but i can even yeah i think king e2 is fine king c2 f2 and you are just too slow because here check king d2 queens and it's a draw So that's the reason why uh, king e4, c7, f5, takes, takes, f4, king c5, f3, rook f8, king e3. Uh, you are just in time. And once again, a perfect example of shouldering. Shank says, I was worried about king e4, king c7. Okay, let's have a look at it. King e4, king c7. Let's say I move my rook away somewhere. Rook h8. Looks okay. Um b7 f5 okay rook d1 f4 rook d8 yes exactly in this position you always have a check and if the king moves you take the pawn and then if rook d7 you go back so he can never uh, stop you from winning that b7 pawn Pankaj Panchal says, I want lockdown to extend. Whew. Well, you know, lockdown has its own benefits, but I think the, the cons are just so many. I mean, I, I guess it will extend for health reasons. It's the best thing. But uh, from an economic standpoint, uh, it's quite dangerous, at least with all the offices and everything being closed. Abdul Kalam says, I think Bogolubo didn't go to Mumbai train. <laughs> Interesting. Um, yeah, he didn't learn shouldering, but sometimes in the heat of the game, it's possible to forget it. Of course, Bogolubo is, is a legend in, in chess. Okay, so I think we finished this one. Let's go to the next position. This one is very interesting because it involves a new theme. Let me see if you guys can learn it. So white to move. What is the result of this game? White to play. Karan says, will you extend the classes? Well, it seems like uh, there's so many more end games to look at. It's quite possible that we will go on, but also depends upon how the lockdown situation is. At least for now, it is until 3rd of May. So let's have a look at it. Uh... Win says Soham Shirode, Tinku Saha draw, Udaykan Mishra draw, New Patel draw, Panaga Joyce says win, Soham Shirode win, Arjun PR win, so many of you think it's a win, so many of you think it's a draw, Honi Arora thinks it's a win, Ilam Parthi says I have played this, okay Ilam Parthi if you can send me your game here which you have played maybe we can have a look at it, uh, against whom? Tanisha Boramanikar says a draw. So, uh, so many people have said it's a draw. So many people have said white wins. How to know? How to know? Think a bit. Think a bit here. All those who say a draw, think a bit more. All those who say a win, also think if there can be a draw. Can be there be a defense for your opponent? So the right way to think is that here this pawn is about to queen. So you must give a check. He has to move down. Right. And now the point is if king c3 you may even lose after queen check. And we know rook versus queen is winning for the queen. If it's a normal position. So king d3 is what white has the, the card under his sleeve. He wants to give a check. So if you make a queen now I give you a checkmate. But turns out 
that here there is a very nice move for black which is very interesting c1 knight very good all those who didn't know about this uh, should learn it it's really very interesting that you make a knight and now it seems like white can still play for a win because after king c3 you will see that the knight can't go to a2 rook will capture knight can't go to that was a long jump knight can't go to b3 the king will capture knight can't go to d3 but knight can go to e2 so he gives a check king d3 and here knight c1 back always keep your knight close to your king don't make a move like knight f4 check here because that would mean that you are straying your knight away and this is dangerous in fact this could well end in a losing position for you after king e3 now the knight cannot come back to his king and it's like a lonely horse who is running on in the wilderness and who's going to be caught very soon Dev Marchia says, couldn't the king go to c1? But if you go to c1, I just come king c3 and pick up your pawn. It's not possible. So king d1, king d3, knight. And now uh, king c3. If king e3, then you go knight b3. If rook b2, please tell me where will you play your knight. I want to make sure that all of you have understood the concept and do not go on horse riding somewhere Shashank Aswad says I see Giri in your thumbnail teaching how to draw today well <laughs> many positions ending in a draw but the main reason for having Giri on the thumbnail is to tell you guys a bit more about him and also he beat Karuana yesterday uh, I think yesterday or day before he beat Karuana and Carlson. So, you know, legend uh, in his own right. Great player. You can make as much fun of Giri as you want, but you have to agree that he's a class act. You know, staying world number four for so many months and uh, qualifying to the candidates based on your rating. Too good. Yes, all of you are right. I'm very happy. Uday Umesh Dandeka, knight d2 means just rook into d2. That's a free knight. But all those who have mentioned knight c1, excellent job, guys. You are not going on horse riding uh, with your knight. But rather keeping him close to your king. That's what is more important here. Keep him close. Okay. So, what we learned, what was the theme we learned in this puzzle, uh, in this position? King d3 and c1 knight. What do we call it so that we remember it? Can anyone tell me? What do we call this theme? Yeah, not enough material. That's true, Evgeny. Arun Dikshit says, I would like to deliver the following praise to GM Giri. He's not easy to defeat. Yes, you are right. You are absolutely right. It's very difficult. It's easy to make fun of him. But when you sit opposite him, you know that you it's not going to be easy to beat him. Honi Arora says, I, I love horse riding, but not in chess. Very good, Honi. You are a chess player first before an equestrian. Yeah. Um, under promotion is the right theme. So that's the fourth theme we have learned today. We have learned cutting the king off horizontally, shouldering or body check, vertical cutoff, and now under promotion. Good. Okay. So now we go to the next position. This one has a story to it. Uh, I must tell you these stories so that you remember me and also the the chess because i i feel that 
as always stories are very powerful way of remembering stuff a visual way okay so this happened in the first saturday tournament in 2010 when i played in hungary it's a very famous tournament that happens in budapest every first saturday so the name itself says first saturday of the month the round robin event will begin there is uh, there is an im uh, round robin there is a gm round robin so you can get norms there so i had told you that i had played the world junior in 2010 and from there i went to budapest from poland in a car journey which was unbelievable yeah it night uh, and then we reached uh, budapest and i was alone you know for one month uh, like 10 days of world junior i had other players like the indian team there were players like lalit babu swapnil dopade uh, setu raman lot of strong players but when i reached uh, budapest uh, i was all alone so the next one month i was on my own uh, for a complete month in budapest and it actually changed my life completely because when you are alone you learn how to survive yeah so i went to uh, first a tournament in kekshemet it's a small town in budapest and i won the first round then i won the second round and i was 2 out of 2 and you usually need 5 and 1/2 out of 9 to make your im norms or or maybe 6 and 1/2 i don't remember 6 and 1/2 perhaps and then i started playing horribly in the next 7 rounds i didn't score any wins i had i think 5 draws 2 losses and then uh, from kekshemet i went to budapest city where the first saturday was held and um, i was put up in a hotel which was 1 hour away from the hall so every day i would take a tram uh, for 1 hour and i would go to the hall play the round come back one hour all alone uh, and then i would stay in the hotel alone over there as well and believe me it start it was an 11 round event and i played uh, round 1 2 3 4 so on and no wins so you can say seven rounds from kekshemet and until round 10 in budapest no win and add to it i think two losses so totally four losses out of 17 rounds uh, and 13 draws and every single day i had to travel one way one hour come back one hour it was horrifying you know like i wanted to somehow kill myself okay maybe killing is a little bit too harsh but i was just like so so depressed there's just no way to win and this was actually the ninth round of the tournament uh, the position that i have and in the in the tournament you know i was young i was 20 years old talented i i was ambitious and my opponents were all all old players old ims of uh, budapest who would do who would come work uh, in the day and in the evening come to play a round and i was i had come from india to play like prepared and all of that and uh, they, this guy i i think you can search his name his name is bella lengiel uh, b e l a bella L E N G Y E L uh, Lengiel I think he should be about 70 years old uh, now maybe at that point he was also around 65 if i am not mistaken uh, and he uh, i thought i should beat him and we reached this end game it was um, i was sur- i was fighting for survival you know um, <clears throat> and here it's black to move and uh, lengiel bella should have played king e3 here but he went c1 queen okay i will show you how to win king e3 now rook f1 now a queen you see a critical tempo because i had to waste a move there king f7 and now uh, a strong move king f4 no, don't take the pawn because g5 and he can make a draw but king f4 stopping everything next move i will cut your king off and it's a draw ah uh, it's a win for black so but he made a queen and i was very happy because i took it and now if he takes with the 
rook i can take king f7 king e3 g5 and i'm just in time to make a draw he took with the king and i played f4 king d2 f5 king e3 f6 uh, sorry g5 king f4 g6 take take and uh, a lot of people gathered around my game because it was the last one going on and it is uh, what do you think here what's happening is this position a draw it's right now black to move it's draw or it's uh, it's black is winning can you tell me arun dikshit says mr lengel is 71 years old now okay fantastic so he was around 61 at that point draw says tinku saha okay anyone who thinks black can win this draw 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 black winning anup datta okay abhi gangeer says loss for white Every, but everyone says it's a draw yeah rook c6 is the only way to try for a win yeah here rook c6 i played uh, king f7 he played king f5 i played g7 and he gave me a check and now the question to you is what would you do here with white and i'm telling you i'm very tricky actually there are two moves uh, that i'm sure you guys will suggest but the one who suggests the best move here i would be very impressed as kasten muller says in this position two moves draw but one is clearly better technique and one is not good technique so how should white continue here one is good technique one is not good technique and i am sure that many of your guys are going to show bad technique uh, ilam parthi and anup datta have shown good technique amay kanitkar uh, amay kanitkar has shown good technique very good only sports and cubing has shown good technique krishna kartik nerela uh, only sports and ah, by the way for all the uh, visually impaired friends i'm sorry i forgot to, to tell the position but try this one king f7 pawn g7 uh, black king f5 rook c7 so white king f7 pawn g7 black king f5 rook c7 white to move where to take your king so all those who said king f8 good news is that it doesn't spoil the draw but bad news is that it's bad technique the right way to play is king g8 here and you might say oh my god but you're giving up the pawn but the thing is i can go king h8 and you cannot take the pawn i mean you have to but if you take uh, it's a stalemate otherwise i'm going to make a queen and then you will have to anyway like check i'll make a queen and you will anyway have to take it so it's a draw so in this way it's the best way it's an immediate way to draw and i was very proud of myself that i found this draw uh, in that game because i had learnt it but if you go like say king f8 then king f6 knight this is also a draw as we know uh, sorry yeah check king b2 but you have to play on black will try to torture you you have to keep your knight close to you not go on horse riding and sort of uh, after maybe another half an hour you can make a draw but here is an instant draw king g8 and then he played rook c4 i played king f7 he checked i went king g8 and uh, it was yeah it was a draw in the game and uh, good new, good news was that in this game after 10 in this tournament after 10 rounds in the last round when actually i faced the top seed of my group 
uh, I am Attila Turzo. I actually managed to beat him. So my last game of the entire trip was my win. And I was so happy. I was so happy that actually I nearly walked half the way. Uh, one hour journey by tram. I walked for nearly a couple of hours looking at different places of Budapest. By the way, beautiful city. Uh, of uh, It's the capital of Hungary. And it has two sides, Buda and Pest. And there's a river flowing in between. Um, yeah, it's it's really nice. If if anyone gets a chance, please go there. Actually, I you might think that every place that I have visited in Europe, I say is nice. Um, I think last time I did mention another place, Palihora in Greece, Palihora. But really, chess tournaments do happen at some of the most scenic places. So that's a good news for all those who want to travel. Okay. So here we learned uh, under promotion, but we also learned good technique for under promotion, which is if you have a night pawn, you must not under promote. Yes. So let's add this to our list of techniques. Just uh, the reason why this works is because good technique with the night pawn or you can say a uh, stalemate trick with the night pawn no that would be better and easier way to remember and as you would have rightly imagined that this trick would not work oops sorry somehow it's just jumping uh, this trick it goes to imbalances what we had learned uh, does not work at all if we move everything to one side here like in this position like one rank like this now this won't work because after this there is no stalemate here black just wins so here you need to under promote if it's a central pawn or a bishop pawn you have to under promote if it is a knight pawn you can go in and try for the stalemate trick. Okay. Right, next, let's go to the next one. We saw uh, C pawn, we saw B pawn. Now we come to A pawn. And this one is black to move. What is the only move in this position? To draw black to move was budapest gambit invented in budapest yes it was Tinku Saha king king a2 means just rook b8 and you lose. Pratamesh Divekar, you really need to work on your notations. The pawn is going this way. Uh, by the way, the position is king d3, white rook h8, black king b3, pawn a3. King d3, rook h8, king b3, pawn a3. All those who said king a2, uh, that's a mistake. King b2 is a good move. a2 is a mistake. So let's first look at a2, why it's a mistake. Because after rook b8, you can't really go. You have to go to the a file. And now I play king b2. Uh, <coughs> I play king c2. You cannot make a queen because of rook a8 check and you lose the queen. So you make a knight because it comes with a check. But unfortunately after king c3, your knight would have loved to go to knight c0. You see nc0 here, but there is no 0 file available in the 0 rank. So it has 
only these two squares left and it will be lost so a2 was <clears throat> a bad move you must play king b2 king a2 also doesn't work you can just play king c2 king a1 and now uh, king b3 a2 and it's a mate from this side so that doesn't work at all but king b2 works and here comes rook h2 check and now my question to you is how do you play in this position king h2 uh, rook h2 black to move you know white will always try he has two checks here one is this check and another one is this check so both he will try but first let's look at rook h2 how do you continue here rook h2 practical thinking very good practical thinking that's a good answer chess with arun right ilam party you are absolutely right amai kanetkar you are right all those who said king b3 shanks you are right vikas nishat you are right king b3 is the best move here again some kind of shouldering yes and next move i'm going a2 a1 but if you play king b1 there's a clear cut problem with this which is king c3 and now a2 i don't even need to wait i can checkmate you immediately so this doesn't work king b2 not rook, now rook h2 means king b3 so he goes rook b8 check how should white play here rook b8 Oh, sorry how should black play here rook b8 check yes chunks you are right king b3 because king b1 and king a1 lose where should you go here with your king now this is something which is worth remembering always that the king shouldn't go to the a file it's very important if you go to the a file you will lose this game there's only one move to draw here yes and prathamesh divekar tinku saha new patel reema singh ilam parthi anup datta divya p win legas p sayan roy all of you have got it right uh, rishila king a1 would not be correct also amai kanetkar king a1 is a mistake because after king c3 a2 it might seem that you have stalemated yourself but now comes the typical winning method where i shield my rook for the time being you try to come out uh, now i play king a3 again checking you you have to go to a1 and now there are several ways to win but maybe the easiest is just to bring out your rook and uh, check and just win the pawn so king a1 is just a mistake please keep in mind that you need to go down on the other side king c1 again it's some kind of shouldering if you can say so stopping the king from coming to c2 uh, if rook a8 king b2 again draw if you play king c3 i play a2 and you have no time to actually stop me uh, if rook a8 king b1 and next move i am making a queen I hope this was clear to you um let me just let me know uh if this was fine because this is very important you must play your king before the pawn king b2 not a2 a2 means you are pushed to the a file you never want to go there okay a2 is bad king b2 check and again don't go to the a file king c1 and now uh, ah karan parik says it's a mate in mate in one okay king a1 how to mate in two uh, did i miss something 
Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can just move my rook away. Correct. That's also fine. It's just mate in two. Right. Yeah, but okay, this king b3 method will be useful if your king is on c4. Okay. If your king is a little far away, then you can't play rook a1 and mate. You can play king b3 and win. So good to know this technique as well. Yes, Mayur, you are right. This doesn't, uh, this is don't go to a slash h file technique. Yeah, sort of. But still, if you remember it as shouldering, part of shouldering, that you don't want the king to come closer. So you shoulder him here. Also in this case, when he gives a check, you shoulder him with king b3. That would be uh, very nice. Okay. So remembering the shouldering concept, let's go to the next position now. It's a very beautiful study by Moravik. And I really love it. I think you guys will also love it a lot. White to move. The position is king h8, rook a2, king g1, pawn g7, pawn h5. Alan K. Thomas says, how was your time with com comedians? Are they good? They were, they were excellent. I enjoyed my time a lot. <clears throat> so king h8, rook a2, king g1, Black king g1, pawns g7, h5. Yes, everyone who's seen this position will definitely be clear about it that uh, how to play here. But if you if you if you take the g pawn, then after h4. King here, h3, king g5, h2. There's no way to, uh, you know, there's no time to stop him from queening. And uh, if you play rook a5, as was mentioned by some of you, I'm thinking about it, but I have a feeling that h4, rook here, king g2, takes king g3 uh, and I should be able to make a draw now because I attack your rook and next move I want to go g5 oops sorry next move I want to go g5 so if you move your rook say a4 then uh, I go g5 if you will play rook uh, h5 then I can improvise with king f uh, sorry king g4 again attacking your rook and after you move somewhere, g5. So it makes sense here to actually stop uh, <coughs> this king into g7 is a bit too slow. So you start with king h7. Now you will realize the point of it is that after h4, let's say if he goes g5, you go king g6. Uh, now you are a tempo up in that entire thing. So now knight and you already know that a knight who is here is trapped because there is no here as we say knight h. How do I put it? Or the other file on that side of the board. So g5 doesn't work. He goes h4, king g6, h3, king here, h2, king g4, h1, queen, and now king g3. And can anyone explain to me why this would not have worked in this position? 
you make a queen and king g3 why doesn't it work here and why with a pawn here it works this very position is there anyone who can explain it Yeah, Ni3, as uh, you rightly pointed out. Yes, Queen H8 is not possible because of this, and that is the main reason that here the Queen moves and controls the A1 square, and with the pawn here it can't do it where it's a mate, and so this was the entire point of the study of Morovic. Morovic where he says push here push 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 and this if you had taken the pawn that doesn't work okay so i hope you enjoyed this study because i really liked it it was very nice okay now we come to a tough theme because this theme is uh, not so simple but i'll let you think about it what it is what is the main yes David Friedman, you are right. Queen H8 guards the checking square. So now this position, it's white to move. How would you continue here as white? Chess, uh, so I'll just tell the position. King E7, Rook D4, Black, King E5, Pawn D5. King E7, Rook D4, King E5, Pawn D5. Chess with Arun says in every day you are increasing 1000 subscribers. Congrats. You also say the best book to increase my attacking style. Well, in general, I would say that if you want to improve your attacking style, look at games by Tal, Kasparov, Alec Hine. These are This is the best way. Or you can see The Art of Attack by Vukovic. It's a nice book to, to learn. Or Attacking Manual by... Um, a guard okay all those who have seen this position get it immediately but all those who have not seen will not get it immediately it's a very tricky one uh, I remember seeing it somewhere in 2008 and I was thinking blindfolded it made a big impression on me because if you don't know and you try to solve it the first move that you always think is rook to d1. Like, I want to keep the rook farthest. And then he goes d4. And then you are at a little bit of a loss as to where should you move your king. Because if you go king d7, he tries to block you. You know, he shoulders you with king d5. And then if you go king c7, now I go king c4. Yeah, king c4. King d6 d3 king e5 king c3 i mean i i think i went wrong somewhere uh d2 king e3 and white wins so not king c4 i must still shoulder it seems king c5 i'll shoulder you further and then if you go king here now i will play king c4 king c6 because now i'm still shouldering you so you go king d6 but that's a crucial tempo now and i will be able to draw the game so you 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 try to understand that actually here it is more about reaching a position like this king d7 king d5 and you need to think if it was white's move which it is here then it's a problem for white but imagine if it's black's move Black can't push the pawn because it is lost. Black can't go to c4 because of king e6. Black can't go to e4 because of king c6. You know, everything is in trouble like that. 
yes this is a study composed by retty you are right uh, and this one the right move here is that therefore to lose a move where you go rook d2 first he is forced to push the pawn and now rook d1 and believe it or not it's a zook zwang white has black has to move and he has no good moves if he goes king e4 he allows my king to join in very quickly into the position and if he goes king d5 uh, here then i i think i can go king f6 but also king d7 is good because after king c4 i now outflank him from the other end and now d3 is hanging and you are just in time to save the game very good all those who said rook d2 pankaj panchal uh, was right sayan roy was right soham shirode was right a lot of people lalit uh, sorry yash bharadia you are right <coughs> a lot of you got that one right uh, so that's good to know your knowledge is really up to the mark but what is the theme that we learnt in this rook d2 Let, tell me the the most powerful theme because yes shouldering was one of them but here uh, actually you were able to break the shouldering so what was the theme dharma ratne says i have a tournament at 10 am well dharma ratne you can just go and prepare for the event and come back and see this last part later because it's important for you to take some rest before an event Zook Zwang is correct, but Zook Zwang is like if you say it's uh, an end game weapon, it's used in every end game. So I wouldn't say uh, Zook Zwang is really the critical theme here. Yes, Pankaj Panchal, you are right. You are right. Uh, Sian Roy and Mayur losing a tempo, possible, but it's not a theme. But the right theme is. definitely what i am going to write down here so that you remember it's known as and we learnt it actually in pawn end games it's known as outflanking so if you see here in this position if after king d5 you play king d7 now whichever direction the king goes you outflank him if he goes this way you outflank him here if he goes here you go this way so it's known as outflanking uh, and uh, that is one of the most important lessons here very good all those who said outflanking excellent okay uh, shall we do one more position which is very difficult maybe i'll give that for homework because there's one more theme that i want you guys to learn and this is actually very important theme because it is so useful to remember it otherwise you can go wrong this one is black to move what is the result of the game white king c4 rook a8 black king g3 pawn g4 black to move what is the result of the game ansh bhargava actually the points which we have noted don't translate into results like winning or losing for white because many times outflanking will only lead to a draw Uh, but it is important to understand these themes so that you can apply them in your game the result uh, depends from position to position <coughs> mohit raj says here from samay raina thanks mohit for coming here uh, i hope you find something valuable and you learn something here <coughs> draw says 
Rishila, Shrishan says draw, Anup Datta says draw. This one is uh, Ilam Parthi also says draw. Very easy for you guys to say draw, yeah? Danushka, Yappa, draw. Okay, I'm, tell me how to draw. Black to move. How do you draw this position? Win for white with precise places. Sparsh Sharma. Okay. Clear winning says Rohit Tidke. Okay, all those who said it's a draw. Please tell me what move you will play. King G2. Plan is to play G3, King H1, G2. Ah, you don't have so much time, Anu. King G2, King D3, G3, King E2. And uh, it doesn't work. Even if you go King H1, I'll give you a check from there on H8. It doesn't work. King F2, right? All those who think King F2 is the way to draw. Okay. Now, think for white. King F2, because this is what uh, you guys felt. And it's a good move, King F2. You are shouldering the white king from coming closer. But white has a very good weapon here. And I'm not going to reveal it. But Rook A2 says uh, chess master, but then King F3 I think is a draw. Soham Shirode, yes, you are right. You are checking it in Mega Database, yes. Kiran Mai Sankula, uh, practical thinking, you are absolutely right. Ashika Kale Arjun PR, Sumed Ram Teke, all of you have said the most natural move. Uh, but it doesn't work so if you play king d3 trying to bring your king closer I will go g3 and if you try to come closer again I play g2 if you give a check I go king g3 and it's a draw so king d3 now if I play g3 you give check I go very important move king e1 it's like that rook pawn where you are going king c1 you go king e1 and now after here you go king f2 and it's all under control. But the right move is rook f8 and all those who said a draw, this is the move which helps white to win. It's known as Zwischensha. Can anyone try to translate my German Zwischensha? I have told you Zwischen meaning in my last class. Let me see if you guys can remember my German <laughs> because uh, you know I, I did German when I was in 11th and 12th I learnt it and then I went to Germany it was very useful for me um, so Zwischen if you are learning a foreign language uh, it could be useful so, uh, now I am work with Chessbase which is a German company as well so it's also interesting uh, the intermediate move, no. What is shark? Uh, yes, David Friedman, you are right. The intermediate check, exactly. Uh, Zug means a move. So Zwischen Zug is an intermediate move. Zwischen shark is the intermediate check. In this position, you give a check. You actually push the king away first. And then you improve the position of your rook with the tempo. So let's imagine that in this position after king f2 you brought your rook directly here then he would play g3. But if you give a check you play king e2 and you play rook g8 you have forced black to actually lose a move which is really very interesting. Uh, and now after king f3 you can see that white has gained a move with tempo. If he had gone rook g8, g3, king d3, then it's draw after g2, this position. But you give a check first on f8, push him away, then play rook g8. Now king f3, king d3, g3, rook f8, king g2, king e2, white wins. 
this game so it's magic yeah it looks like magic but uh, in intermediate check or in between check is just very very powerful okay very good if uh, all of you uh, understood this important concept i would be very happy because this is really an important one to remember so let me just note down this one as well because it is an important one to remember it's known as the intermediate or in between check also known in german as zwischen schach yeah, i hope my german is correct anyone from germany here in the stream so that he can correct me if my english is wrong david friedman says the check out shoulders blacks attempt to shoulder white yeah that's a nice way to put it uh, because blacks attempt was to shoulder the white king with the mu king f2 white rook comes with a check and says hey do you want to still shoulder black says yes says no go back and then you come so it's mainly about it, the black king is still shouldering the white king but it's mainly about improving your rook's position with a tempo that's the most important thing okay let's look at one more position in this theme so that you will be very clear this is a game between hamduchi and topalo topalo is black very great player uh, and you need to tell me what should black play here in this position ashish rana is from germany wonderful ashish good to know which which city of germany are you from uh shri kumar says shak means chess yes shak means chess in german but also i think shak also means check but maybe i'm wrong yeah saurav banerji says health issues forced me to miss live classes miss the vibrance well saurav nice to see you back uh, it's always uh, good to have your uh company you you have so much knowledge about the history of chess so if you feel better do come to the streams ilam parthi you are right now this time uh, all those who learned from the last example will be able to find the move well if you give me a check like this i'll just go king g5 uh or maybe and and or maybe can i go king uh, g7 does it is it okay i'm threatening h5 so you go rook a5 i go king here you go king d4 i go h5 i think just in time yeah like i'm going to make a queen here so you give a check king b2 uh, and uh, remember that you don't really want to go here and allow the black king so you can just shoulder him and it should be it should be a draw so here the right move uh, in the game king d4 was played but that's a mistake because after h5 king e5 h6 king e6 well rook g2 uh, king now here you play if rook g2 you play king here yeah i think that's the correct way so king e6 and now what's the right move can anyone tell me here white to move yes edwardo edwardo torres you are right ah shanks was thinking it was going the other way by the way for for all the people uh, all the visually impaired chess players white king g6 pawn h4 black king c3 uh, rook a2 okay king g6 h4 king c3 rook a2 sorry for uh, 
getting in between so we had reached uh, this position here where was it sorry um, this one what's the best move for white and I think all of you have got it right it is king g7 correct if you push the pawn you will be pushed to the rook file which you really don't want and now queen means rook h2 check so you must make a knight and then after king f6 it's a draw oh, sorry it's a win because king h7 I make a waiting move you play king h6 and rook g1 <laughs> So the right move is actually to give a Zwischen shark, uh, an intermediate check and after king f5 to go back and now the rook is beautifully placed behind the pawn, king g5, king d4 and you are so much in time now because <clears throat> it's now pretty simple, it's a mate, okay. One of the important things to remember when an intermediate check works is when the king is ahead of the pawn. Because the king is ahead, you give a check, it has to come back and it has to come back. That's the main thing. Imagine that if the king was not on uh, g6 but on g4 here, then Zwischen's shark makes no sense because you give a check here and you helped him anyway to improve his position because from g4 it went to g5 but if in this very start position uh, if the king was on g6 then the Zwischen shark makes a lot of sense because the king is pulled back yeah so that's why the in between check or the intermediate check works when the king is ahead of the pawn Okay, so I think uh, in general, we have learned a lot of things today. Uh, we've covered a lot of themes as well. Um, I don't know if uh, we have done everything. But yes, this is the last position. Maybe um, I will give you for homework. So I would like to give you two things for homework. Let me just... Uh, Put it out here itself so that you get it for your work uh, how was it there was one more position yeah this one so that I don't forget it and I will add it also to the description last two days I have been unable to put it up there and so I don't want to do the same thing uh, I go output publish to web and yes so I'm going to put this file in the chat, uh, put this link in the chat, but also in the description so uh, that all of you can download this after the class is done. So just try to solve it. If anyone is able to, the, the, those are two nice positions. One first one is black to move. I, I should improve it just a second. Black to move, and the second position is white to move. Yeah, let me just get this. Uh, sorry for doing this, but often when I just leave it out, there's so many other things to do that I forget, and I really want to give you homework for today so here you go uh, this is the second link which i am sending you that has the correct one so please use that okay well in general i think we have learned a lot of things today about rook and pawn endgame the most important are these themes cutting off the king horizontally uh, shouldering or body check Vertical cutoff, you remember this rook f2 cutting the king off, under promotion, stalemate trick with the knight pawn, outflanking when you take the opposition and then you outflank, and intermediate check. Okay, so I hope that all of you will remember this. 
and whenever you get a position try to see which one is actually working in that okay lastly i would like to say for everyone who's here that there is going to be a tournament that we are going to help hold if you go to kerala sorry chess kerala dot chess dot in this tournament is on 2nd of may that is tomorrow and a lot of people have already registered for it if you look at it there are it's a fundraising event for uh, kerala's chief ministers distress fund a lot of top gms and ims are taking part in fact uh, there are many strong players and uh, we have close to how many 262 entries already and i expect it to uh, there will be many more and we have raised a total amount of 283862 for just this event which will be given to kerala chief ministers uh, distress fund so all of you who would like to play please go to chesskerala.chessbase.in and you can pay the entry fee which is not an entry fee as such it's a donation you can pay here and you can play against some of the best players in india okay so all of you who enjoyed this class thank you very much i see good comments here from you so that's nice uh, to know that you are enjoying it ashika kale the homework is in the link in the description david friedman thank you for joining in dharma ratne all the best for your event um dandapani kuppu swami thanks mayur gondalekar says thank you for today sorry we'll need to check the last 30 minutes again as work from home see you tomorrow all all right jan daryl thank you um yesterday you gave some puzzles to comedians in the country i also looked at it nice practical thinking that's good to know thank you honi arora for uh, your nice words yeah today's class got over so in so quickly all of you enjoyed so that's nice to know and thanks all i'll be seeing you tomorrow and if there's anyone who's new and hasn't subscribed to chess base india then please do so um, there will be a lot of things that we'll be doing in the days to come so take care see you bye bye